Prayer on the floor. Kicks back to the middle step. Sloppy, but Drexel's there. Oh, oh. Inside Jackson. No doubt about it. Connor back out. Picked off by Milstead. Driving. Off the glass. And in. That's going to be it. The Lopes win. For the seventh straight season, the Lopes rang in the new year with a win. What does Dan think about his team's start to conference play? And before we look forward to the upcoming rivalry, we take a look back at the best moments of 2018. Also, you'll never guess what Carlos Johnson would choose above all else. It's all coming up right now on the Dan Marley Show. We have to start establishing this is our play. From here on out. Hey, this is what we play for. We're better safe than them. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hello and welcome to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside the head coach of your GCU Lopes, Dan Marley. And the Lopes are off to a 2-0 start to conference play. All things are great here on the campus of Grand Canyon University. But before we get to that 2-0 start, let's go back at what perhaps set up that 2-0 start, a really, really tough non-conference schedule. Yeah, I thought uh, we scheduled that for a reason. Um, I thought our guys played uh, relatively well. We were disappointed that we didn't get more wins. Uh, and as I said, a lot of things can happen when you schedule that tough that if you lose some games, uh, losing's hard and uh, your team can fracture or can, can get, get you better. And I think it got better. Our guys' attitude has been unbelievable. Uh, they've realized that they have to do certain things on the offense and the defensive end uh, to win games. And they've taken uh, ownership of this team, which is great. So uh, the non-conference schedule, although it was disappointing that we didn't win a few of those games, I think it served its purpose. Yeah, the Wooden Legacy Classic, some great competition there. Seton Hall, Utah, LaSalle, you come out with a, a win there, but those games were all tight. Colangelo Classic, Nevada, that game was tight as well. I guess the only one might have been Texas, but you were in. Well, not might. We, we got, we got okay. boat raced to Texas, but that had a lot to do with them. Uh, they, they shot the ball extremely well, and we just kind of lost our mind. Uh, just couldn't stop it, and sometimes that's going to happen. And uh, we were able to bounce back. It was uh, pretty impressive that we went to after that to Northern Iowa, which is a team that's hard to hard to beat there. And I thought we uh, had a really good performance. And then we go to uh, uh, San Diego. It's another team that's really good. And that's when I thought that our defense really started to kick in. We have a San Diego team that was very efficient offensively to 61 points. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't score enough points and had 58 ourselves. But uh, I think our guys uh, realized after that game that defensively is a way that we can stay in a lot of games and, and perhaps win. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the switch was flipped because the two conference games were victories. And defensively, you're shutting teams down now. Yeah, we've, we've done a really good job. Uh, as I said, when Utah Valley came in here and Seattle, both teams that uh, were high-powered offenses, move the ball, uh, can really score. Uh, for us to have those type of performances defensively was really good. Um, and we won, and, it, and let's not act like we shouldn't. I mean, we are the second-ranked team in the WAC. Uh, we have to uh, protect home court, but those were two really good wins for our group to start off the season. Well, let's talk about them. Utah Valley comes in riding a five-game winning streak. Uh, you shut them down. You got Matt Jackson stepping up, 19 points in the game, eight rebounds. Yeah, we did a really good job on the Toulson kids. Mm -hmm. uh, they are very high-powered. We did a really good job on them. Uh, Matt was terrific, just moving without the ball. Uh, we talked about guys stepping up, and there may be different guys every night besides Ollie. Matt was the guy that night, and uh, defensively we were really good. And, and another thing that uh, Utah, Utah Valley was a really good uh, offensive and defensive rebounding team. And we've really decided that, uh, I told our guys, I looked at a stat, and we were 7-0, or 7-0 when we uh, out-rebounded opponent, and we were 0-6 when we got out-rebounded. So the emphasis has been really on rebounding the basketball, offensive rebounds. I thought we did a really good job against Utah Valley. And we run the re won the rebound battle, I think, 40-38, to and we won the game. A big win there and on Thursday evening, and then you counter that with a visit from Seattle, another team that had a very impressive non-conference mark, 12-3 and three coming in, a team that is uh, that piled up a lot of points, and you and you shut them down defensively once again. Yeah, another very efficient offensive team and a really good defensive team. They had one of the top teams in the nation defensively also, and uh, that's a team that lost at Bakersfield, so they knew they were going to come in on Saturday, uh, didn't want to start 0-2. Uh, we knew it was going to be a, a tough test for our guys, and again, defensively, I mean, uh, to hold that team to 34% shooting uh, field goal-wise, 
was, was a great uh, testament to our guys. They, they did a really good job and then again rebounded. We dominated the boards. Yeah, you sure did. Larger margin than even against Utah. 24 points below Seattle's average coming into that game. You talked about a mindset, but is there something specifically on the court that, that the team is doing to shut teams down defensively? Just buying in, doing the things that they're supposed to do, hold each other accountable, uh, being tough, and then rebounding, ending the possession. Uh, we've really concentrated on that. and. Uh, it's been no secret offensive. We've been challenged a little bit here and there. Um, so our guys understand that if we're able to get stops and get rebounds, we can get out and run, and maybe the offense will be a little bit easier. But you got to give all the credit to our players. They have really, really bought in and understand it. You know, since the beginning of the year, we talked about the whack season. And when that whack season started, they took it to heart. 15 points, 14 rebounds, a double-double for Trey Drexel in the game. Impressive. Yeah, and I tell Trey, he's a guy who could probably average 10 a game. And he's taking that to heart. He wants the guy that can rebound. He's got great size uh, for being a one and a two in the position. Uh, he really crashed the boards and that's what our guys got to do because a lot of times guys like Ollie and Mike and, and Matt and Jared and those guys are down there battling bigs and they may not get the rebound. It's up to our guards, especially our big guards, to get in there and get rebounds. And you know, Trey had 10 rebounds in the first half and uh, just played really well. Up next, it's the best of 2018. Lopes insider Paul Coro takes us through some of GCU's top moments of the past year. GCULopes.com. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant, in-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. We needed one more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes. Curiosity fuels you. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems, you're helping to build a better tomorrow. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, and nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Live from the heart and soul of Phoenix, welcome to the campus of Grand Canyon University. Let's have a little fun out there. Move the ball. Let's go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh. If you have to, gotta go get it if you have to. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. As the uh, team gets set to travel to New Mexico Thursday evening, New Mexico State, the Aggies. As we uh, begin the early 2019 season, you look back at 2018, your, your fondest memory? Probably the tournament, the WAC tournament. It's our first year eligible. We've been looking forward to that for 
know, four years, five years, and then to get there and to be able to get by UMKC the first game, our guys were extremely nervous. Uh, I think we were down 22 to three. We fought back, got that game, and then to play Utah Valley, who finished ahead of us, ahead of us in the conference race, uh, to beat them uh, by 15 and get to the final game. We were disappointed that we didn't uh, meet our goal, which is to beat New Mexico State and get to the NCAA tournament our first year eligible. But I think for us to get to that final game and to see what it takes to win three games in a tournament was a great step for our program. All right, Lopes insider Paul Coro takes a look at the top moments of 2018. Hi, I'm GCU insider Paul Coro, and it's been a breakthrough year in Lopes Athletics. GCU took it to another level in 2018 many times, but here are our top five moments of the year. On March 9th, the men's basketball team made its first entry into the WAC basketball tournament in Las Vegas and earned a spot in the championship game when it beat Utah Valley 75-60 in the semifinals. The defense was so good that head coach Dan Marley had a little extra pop in his step when he jumped with the Havocs during the postgame celebration. On April 18th, there was more jumping jubilation when the WAC Women's Golf Championship came down to the final stroke on the final hole in Phoenix. GCU freshman Siri Pachana won the individual conference tournament title, but also clinched the team championship and an NCAA regional spot when she sank her putt on 18 and got showered with affection by her teammates and head coach Lauren Jacecki. On May 18th, the baseball team did it again when Jake Repovich recorded his 20th career win at Seattle. For the second consecutive season, GCU won every conference series and claimed the regular season WAC title under head coach Andy Stankiewicz. A week later in May, Tom Flood's track and field team that swept WAC men's and women's indoor and outdoor team titles had a historic day at the NCAA West preliminaries. Pole vaulter Scott Marshall, long jumper Marcus Flanagan, and javelin thrower Jesse Newman all qualified for the NCAA championships. Newman went on to finish ninth in the nation to be put on the All-America second team. And the capper came on November 11th when the men's soccer team went on an incredible late season run that gave Shellis Heinemann the fifth most coaching wins in NCAA men's soccer history and put the Lopes in the NCAA tournament. GCU shut out every WAC tournament opponent during the tournament, including a 1-0 championship victory against San Jose State in Seattle to head to NCAAs. That's a wrap on 2018. Now let's see what the Lopes have in store for 2019. For more from Lopes insider Paul Coro, check out GCULopes.com as he goes in-depth with everything and anything related to GCU athletics. You'll get previews for each sport, inspiring stories, and full coverage of the men's basketball program at home and on the road. It's up to date at your fingertips at GCULopes.com. When we come back, he's from the Seattle area and his family was watching his big performance against Seattle U. We catch up with Trey Drexel next. Experts in clean since 1945. We help businesses keep their facilities cleaner, healthier, greener, and safer. We are passionate about what we do and are committed to making your workplace environment the cleanest and healthiest it can be. Performance is your profession. You excel in bringing the best out of people and teams to discover their true potential, but you strive to take the next step in your career. GCU's PhD in Performance Psychology online degree program gives you the tools you need to elevate your performance to the next level and do it all within your tight schedule. When human excellence meets cutting edge technology, business advances. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online. 
came through dripping. Came through dripping. Came through dripping. Tell us on my wrist, they dripping. Ice. Came through dripping. Came through dripping. Mountain Dew Ice. A clear, refreshing lemon lime dew. I chose GCU because of the great atmosphere, um, the incredible people that's here, and just the love and the, the feel of the city of Phoenix. Um, it's, I can't really explain it. Um, it's definitely have had the biggest impact on me in my life. Um, just coming here and being able to experience all of these great people and all of these, this, this great Christmas uh, Christian atmosphere um, is definitely one of the main things that I've chosen GCU. I'm studying communications and hopefully one day get to play professional basketball. <laughs> Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. Barry Butel alongside Trey Drexel of the GCU Lopes. And uh, Trey, your conference schedule is underway and you guys are out to a 2-0 start after big wins against Utah Valley and Seattle. Seems like uh, Coach Marley's talked about setting the tone defensively. What are your thoughts after a 2-0 start? Yeah, I mean, defense is all about effort. And I think um, really in that preseason, we weren't consistent in our effort. And I think uh, that's what we really, you know, ratcheted up. You know, you know, coach doesn't shouldn't have to coach effort. And uh, I think we're starting to hold each other accountable, you know, in the, in the things that we can really control. And so, you know, defense and rebounding, you know, those are effort stats, those are effort um, categories, and I think that's that's where we really turned up. It was a really tough non-conference schedule coming yeah. in. Did that help kind of sharpen you guys up? Yeah, I think, I mean, it can go one of two ways. If you can get a lot of momentum by beating some some of those teams, or, you know, in our case, we, we were right in there, um, learn how to battle a little bit. Um, but it was, it, it was tough, honestly. Like, uh, we're not okay with losing, and so, um, that start was a little rough, but I think it kind of motivated us, you know, knowing that we can compete with the best of them. You talk about, you know, being tough, maybe transitioning. You personally transitioning from D2 to D1. Mm -hmm. For a lot of people, it looks like you've made that transition pretty well. What, what, are, what have struggles have you had, uh, if any? Um, well, honestly, the biggest thing um, for me is the physicality and kind of like the speed of the game. I think uh, at the start, um, I uh, underestimated some of my abilities. You know, you're a little wide-eyed coming out. Uh, that D2, you only play the Division I's and the exhibition games, and your heart's pounding. It's, it's a lot different when you're playing Utah, Texas, like every night, and it's just a regular thing. So for me, it's really, you know, getting into those, you know, secondary reads off ball screens and kind of like, you know, the secondary reads, you know, on defense and the help side coverages and stuff like that. So. Big win against Seattle, and of course, yeah. Washington is your home state. Mm -hmm. Western Washington was the school you transferred from. I'm assuming you had some people maybe tuning in, watching the live stream. You seem to be pretty motivated. Uh, 15 points, 14 rebounds, double-double, first D1 double-double yeah. for you. Um, well, for me, it was uh, the second time my parents have flown out here, but it was the first time my sister flew out uh. here. And so um, for me, that was super special. Um, she's a volleyball player at the University of Washington. so. It was nice to get a you know a win against a school right near there. So they need fun. to come out to every game now. Yeah, for real. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Talk a little bit, would you, about the mentality of rebounding at, at the guard position? Um, I think honestly, for me, it's um, with our big guys and how physical they are. You know, boxing out the other bigs. Um, at, at the one in the two spots, sometimes the guards uh, on offense will leak out. And so as a defensive player, I can kind of like check my man and you know go in there and be really aggressive because you know, there's no one boxing me out. So it's like, I just I just see it up in the air, just go get it. And so um, that's kind of my mentality on that. Finally, how about a little bit of a preview, the mindset of the team getting set now for New Mexico State and UTRGV on the road. Yeah, well, Your like- first trip there. Yeah, I've heard lots of lots of stories about um, that road trip and I'm really excited. And I know the rivalry with New Mexico State and um, co coach just keeps sticking the motto, motto it's, it's win or die for us. And you know, every game's gotta be, you know, like our last because like we got, 16 conference games, and we want to make the most out of every single one of them. Well, good luck to you and the rest of the team. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Appreciate Trey Drexel, our yeah, guest. Please. Stay with us. We check in with Carlos Johnson, Trey's teammate, in this installment of This or That. What's good, everyone? This is Carlos Johnson. This is This or That. Steak or chicken? Ooh, steak. Snapchat or Instagram? <laughs> Snapchat. <laughs> Jordan or LeBron? LeBron. Smart friend or funny friend? Smart friend. Dancing or karaoke? Dancing. Coffee or energy drink? Energy drink. Netflix or YouTube? Netflix. Country or hip hop? Hip hop. Steak or Snapchat? 
mistake. LeBron or a smart friend? LeBron. Dancing or energy drink? Uh, dancing. Netflix or hip hop? Ooh, hip hop. Steak or LeBron? I guess LeBron. <laughs> dancing or hip hop? <laughs> hip hop. LeBron or hip hop? I'm such a LeBron fan. LeBron. Up next, it's a team that continues to garner national attention. What does the men's volleyball team look like this season? Head coach Matt Worley gives some insight into his squad. Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu. The new year has begun, and so begins the volleyball season for the men's team. Coming off a top 15 win against Cal State Northridge, they will host their first home games of the season this Friday and Saturday in Antelope Gymnasium. Softball and baseball are just around the corner, with softball hosting the GCU kickoff tournament starting February 7th and baseball beginning at home February 15th. Just a reminder, you can stream all those events live on GCU TV. Last year's momentum, I think we could be a little bit disappointed with the way we finished last season. So we're trying to use that as more of a uh, motivating memory. You know, obviously it's nice to be preseason ranked again, but we have a whole new squad. You know, we graduated nine guys last year, uh, have seven freshmen. So getting them up to speed through the fall has been great. And I'm really impressed with what they've done. So I'm excited to see where this year goes. Keith is a familiar name. He's one of the best setters to come through this program, and we have three young setters right now. I'm happy to have him come back. He's been doing great things behind the scenes, but more importantly, he's been designating most of his time in the gym to working with our setters, and they're getting some really good training. Demographically speaking, Arizona was really strong last year for boys volleyball. Uh, so Parker Broadway from Arizona, we have a couple older guys, uh, Trevor Weary, David Kishel. Uh, we graduated one guy, Cody Williams, so we like to stay local if we can. Uh, we have two stud outsides from uh, San Diego, Camden Gianni and Christian Janke. Those guys are going to be on the court a lot for us. You know, starting at Libero this year, so another freshman from Arizona, Cole Udall. He's going to be great. You know, we're, we're really happy with where we are. Every year, I think our attendance to matches has increased. I think there's a buzz around campus about, you know, the good character that we have within our program, but also the exciting matches and the teams that we bring into this uh, into this tiny little gym. We love it. We love playing in here. It's exciting. It's definitely a must-see. Coming up, the Lopes hit the road. What is Dan looking for from his team for the big rivalry against the Aggies? As a teacher, your calling was always to make a difference and positively impact the future. You live with a deep sense of purpose and strive to inspire generations of change. GCU's online Master's of Education degree program gives you the skills you need to grow and develop your career. You're not just inspiring future generations of leaders, you're giving them the tools they need to succeed. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable, nonprofit. Visit gcu.edu slash online.
one more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes! Thunder in the heart of Phoenix. GCULopes.com. Hillstead up high. Carlos got How did he do it? How did he do it? He pulled it out of thin air. Yeah. Woo! Well, I don't know if the final nail had already been put in the coffin, but that was certainly a little exclamation point. Love this one here by jo uh, Johnson. He just goes up and hangs just a little bit more. Catches the ball below the rim and then takes it up over the rim. <laughs> Michael Jordan in that 23 Ooh. jersey. Welcome back to the Dan Marley Show. One final segment as we take a look at the upcoming games. Uh, Thursday night tip-off. New Mexico State at New Mexico State against the Aggies. This is an intense place to play. It'll be a war. Uh, you know, they started off at uh, Cal Baptist there, uh, their Shocker. inaugural game. You know, it's not really a shocker to me. I mean, it's a shocker that they lost, but we knew Cal Baptist. They're a good team. They got some really good players, good program. I think they went 20 and 8 and 6 last year. Uh, their coach has been there for a long time, so we knew there'd be a good program. They'd be fired up to play. Um, and that's the last game New Mexico State has played since they're going to meet us on Thursday. So yeah. they will be ready. They will be foaming at the mouth. It'll be a war like it always is. It's the two top programs in the WAC. And, you know, I told our guys, it's what about college basketball is about. It's going to be an exciting game to play in and a great atmosphere. And uh, it should be a, a hard-fought game. And uh, I'm excited to, to you know, be involved in it. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then uh, Saturday followed up the uh, road trip at UTRGV, a team that knocked off Cal Baptist. Yeah, and they've knocked us off before, too. We have a hard time playing there. And so uh, the great thing about the WAC this year is that no matter where you play, it's going to be a hard battle. Uh, it's never going to be an easy game, so we'll have to go in there on short rest uh, and find a way to uh, to win that game against an improved team. You know, the uh, student managers did it again. I don't know if you heard it. I think a freshman hit an like, awesome hook shot from like mid center court, mm -hmm. and it went, it was almost like a switch right into the net. Really? Yeah. So what are you saying? Huh? What are you saying? Well, I'm just saying uh, the, the first installment of the show, uh, you went iron. So as we close things out with the Dan Marley Show, well, what you guys don't seem to realize is that I'm now 53 years old, and it really? takes me a while to get a little warmed up. So you want me to shoot this right now? Sure, sure. sure. That'd be great. Who knew? 53, wow. And on that note, thanks for tuning in to the Dan Marley Show. Yay, yay!